Hi everyone, it's Lennon, and today we're going to figure out which court card we are. <laughs> I found a video years ago about the tarot and the Myers-Briggs test, right? Now, if you're familiar with the Myers-Briggs, it's kind of like a personality test that identifi identifies four, four traits and then it just goes down, it like condenses the categories into a four letter type that you are, right? And it could be 16, you, you get there's 16 personality types. Uh, disclaimer, as like upon reading up on the various personality types, some things may be spot on, right? Kind of like a horoscope. <laughs> Some things are going to be spot on, but then some things are going to be like way out there and you're going to be like, oh, that's not me at all. That's okay. This is just something fun that I have been researching lately. And I kept thinking if I was a court card, you know, like there's probably, there's probably bound to be a court card that is in the deck that you're like, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> and then you calculate it and you figure it out and you're way off. That's what happened. Now, the Myers-Briggs is based a lot on Jung's personality type theories. And so, if you're familiar with Jung, who, who gave us the ideas of archetypes and stuff, right? He is the, he, his theories are what's based on the Myers-Briggs. Basically, the test is designed to see how each 16 personality types perceive the world and then with their perceptions how they make decisions and this test is a way for us to map out which type we are as a way to say okay you know like I'm a A personality or I'm a C personality or whatever that's not even this test but I'm saying once we have a, a little bit of a grasp of what type of personality we are, then how we have like how how we react to certain things that happen and how we are in relationships, it just kind of opens your eyes a little to see and give and just to see a little bit more in depth about how your brain works. And I have actually found that sometimes it changes. My personality type at 15 is probably way different than my personality type now. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I won't say it changes a lot, but I believe that our experiences, like our life experience, changes how we perceive things as well. Um, not just solely our ma mind map. So, there are four categories that are used in the testing, like I said, and I'm going to go over what they are. I've written, written them down on my little handy dandy notebook over here. There's introversion and extroversion. Then we have sensing and intuition. So do you have to feel things, right? Do you have to sense and feel things or do you just intuitively know things? And that's how like you're either one or the other. Then there's thinking and feeling, right? Does your brain, are you logical, right? You left, right side. That's kind of how I think of that. <laughs> and then there's judge and perception. And so, like I said, once you map that out, it plugs out 16 personality types, okay? And I'm not gonna give you mine, but I encourage you, if, if for anything but just to have fun with it, Okay, and not something serious. It may be something that you can journal about. It may just be an exercise for you to even further get to know yourself because as a solitary practitioner in my spiritual witchy practice, that's like the most important thing is to know thyself. And I've made a video about that already. But so if there's things out there that can open my mind up to how I perceive the world and how I react and how I deal with relationships and how I am in relationships and how I am in all things like career, you know, career, family, 
children, whatever, it helps to open my eyes to some of that stuff. And so when doing this exercise, just keep that in mind. You don't, this doesn't have to be anything like that's in stone. This can just be a fun exercise that takes you on a get to know yourself that, uh, journey. There is also another website that I'm going to encourage you to go. And it's called the Kirzy Temperament Sorter. Now what they have effectively done on this website is taken the 16 personality types and then roped them into like role variants. Um, basically it's taking the personality types and putting an actual archetype on there is how I kind of perceive the website. I'm going to leave the, I took my Myers-Briggs on a website I think called 16personality.com. Um, it's free, it's easy, they email you re your results. Um, they give you a name as well. Mine happened to be the mediator, which isn't what the Kirzy Temperament Sorter put me as. <laughs> but, so that's going to be different. But it's just for the four letters. And then you go to the Kirzy Temperament Sorter. You plug that in to, like, you find yours. And then it gives you a name. And when we look at the suits for one okay like look for the suit of cups it would be the teacher the counselor the champion and the healer that's making a lot of sense isn't it for the cups <laughs> when I saw that I was like wow that that's pretty crazy now, like I said, the disclaimer back at the beginning. This isn't an exact science, okay? Everyone has different life experiences, different, they make different observations. So, what personality type I am, and then let's say you're the same personality type, we could be really different people in general. <laughs> so, I, I just wanna put that out there, but when you figure out what court card you are, especially if you're already a lover of tarot and a tarot nerd and wanna know everything, and a studier like me, I just, I kind of like to open up, look tarot outside of the box, and relearn a lot of things that, you, that I think I know. Retake some of the notes that I took years ago that may open my, open my mind even more. So it's all about expansion. And when I think of it that way, I think, okay, the court card I am. So when it comes up in a reading, right, I'm like, okay, well, then this is talking about somebody that's a lot like me or it's talking about me, right? Or I can just get a feel of the reading because I'm kind of making that connection between me and this court card. And I'm like, oh, okay, well then that's how I think. <laughs> Maybe the reading's going in that direction. So it, it's, a, it's a kind of just a fun way to add something else to the reading. There's so many layers that you can put on a reading that I like to explore those things. We're gonna turn the camera around, look at the court cards, give them a name, <laughs> and then I encourage everyone to take the test and figure out what they are. Tell me if you've done it. Tell me if this is a fun exercise that you've done that has expanded your tarot practice or expanded getting to know yourself a little bit. And I like to mix the two. So, see you on the other side. Okay, welcome back. Now we're gonna jump right in here. We're gonna start at the Kings and work our way down to the pages, so to speak. And what I'm gonna do is tell you the four letter personality type, and then of course what that may be, and then the name that the Kirzy Temperament Sorter gives that personality type. And you might start to see some patterns too, and we'll kind of go into that a little bit. Um, okay, so let's get started. First, the first pattern that I have saw, that I saw with this is that all the kings are extroverted, all of them. And then there are other three letters, so to speak, we'll go over in a minute. Now the king of wands is an ENTJ which is an extrovert, intuitive, thinking, judging. Wow. That's a lot of willpower, okay? 
If you just think about those four letters for a second, that's a whole bunch of willpower. Now, the name they dub him is the field marshal. Now, a field marshal is a highly ranked military officer is really what the definition of a field marshal is. And so when I think of a field marshal and I think that that about how it's defined, I think about Jack Nicholson in that movie, you know, you can't handle the truth. Like it's so, they're so driven and so determined and ambitious that they are really stoic, right? Like, look, he's even sitting up straight. He's not relaxed. And there's just so much to him in, in terms of willpower that it's hard to put his fire out, right? So Field Marshal to me makes a lot of sense. Think about all the military movies that you've watched and those highly ranked officers. There's a, not a lot of flow happening with them. <laughs> so, but they're not afraid to let that be known as extrovert, as extroverts. So let's move on. Then we get the ENFJ. Now that is a extroverted, intuitive, feeling judging. So the only difference between these two is that he is a thinker and he's a feeler. So a field marshal that actually feels things would be what? There's a lot of drive with that. Remember, he's got a whole bunch of drive, but because he's a thinker, he's kind of more of a, you know, a strategist than, than anything. Then when you add feeler onto that, the name they give him is the teacher. That makes a lot of sense. There needs, there has to be some, some like, to me, that means that there's a lot of structure in a teacher that teachers have a lot of lesson plans, right? There's a whole bunch of, of willpower to keep going, right? Think about bratty kids, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but the fact that he's a feeler means that you can relate to him in a way that he's probably a really good teacher. Makes a lot of sense for the King of Cups. And then we come down here to the King of Swords, which is an ESTJ. So that is an extroverted sensing, thinking, judging. So he is sensing a whole bunch of things. Now that means that they are related. The only difference being is that he's intuitive right? His mind map is pretty intuitive and he knows his own, own mind in a way that he's stuck in his mental, his mental, he's stuck in his mentality. But then you get to the king of swords, which is all about mentality as well, but he's sensing. In his mind, it's all about sensing things, right? That makes a lot of sense. I love all these butterflies in his throne. I just, oh, I love that. Now the name they give him is the supervisor. Again, makes a lot of sense. If these are related and the only difference is that his field marshal, he, or he's a field marshal and he's a supervisor, again, there's a lot of willpower with these professions, right? When I think of a supervisor, I think of like a big boss of like Walmart, right? Not really the CEO yet, just a really powerful manager and how there is a lot of determination having that those types of positions, but there needs to be some, some sense of sensing clarity with that position. Think about how big a Walmart is and how he's over the whole thing, right? This big manager, supervisor, and he has to make sure the garden department is good, the health department is good, the grocery department is good. The clothes are all coming in right. I mean, trucks. I mean, there's a lot of mental, men, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of, there's a lot of mind mapping with this position as well. Then we get to the King of Pentacles. Now, I always thought of him as this gentle, very grounded man, but he's still a king. He's still an extrovert. Now, he would be the ESFJ, which would be an extrovert sensing feeling judging. So again, the only difference between these two is that he's intuitive and he's sensing. They're feelers though. Judging, feeling, sensing, intuitive, right? 
And when I think about that, and then I think about the name that they give him, which is the provider, I think of the family man in a way that he'll do whatever it takes to take care of his family, right? And there can be so, it's like so much groundedness with that, that he could be a workaholic, in my opinion. I believe that the, per, the ultimate provider is like, I've got to do this, this, and this. Again, I see a lot of like really powerful positions here. The provider is a pro powerful, powerful position as well, being the family man and structuring the whole entirety of the family. And he knows that by doing that, the main thing he has to do is provide. So he probably works a shit ton. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna get to the queens now. Now, much like the kings are all extroverted, the queens are all introverts. And when I think of that, I think, okay, well that makes a little bit of sense. Like they need their solitude, right? They need their alone time to be able to, to really process the position that the Kersey temperament sorter gives them. So let's start with the queen of wands. And she is a INTJ. So the only difference between her and the king of wands is that he's an extrovert and she's an introvert. So if he is the field marshal, this highly ranked military officer, and the only difference is, is that he can be outward, you can't handle the truth type of an attitude, and she is the field marshal, but in a alone way. In a, I can, she's a field marshal all by herself. She doesn't need the following of people that the field marshal has to be able to have that that type of position and they dub her the mastermind that makes a lot of sense if you think of like I kind of think of this as the Knights of the Round Table if the King of Wands would be like the King he's the one that's that's he's the one doing all the talking but his right-hand man whoever it may be could be his wife could be his mother whoever but his right-hand man is the one that's sitting there and he's doing all the listening. The mastermind's doing all the listening. The king is just spouting out all his knowledge and his strategies and bringing out all these maps and knowing where all the ships need to go. And they, the mastermind, is sitting there with everyone's knowledge. Not just like street smarts, but they've got a whole bunch of common sense to be able to plug all of that into one. That's kind of how I think of the Queen of Wands. So being the mastermind, that could be anyone. That could be the fact that this this particular female, right? Let's just say that this is a female. That could just be that she wears the pants in that family because she takes care of all the finances. She takes care of the lawn care, you know, and all the man does is bring home the bacon, like the field marshal. Let's just say, okay, more on that here. <laughs> So then we get to the Queen of Cups. Now the Queen of Cups is the counselor, as an ENFJ, or an INFJ, I'm sorry. So she is an intuitive, an uh, in, introvert intuitive, feeling, judging. Again, only difference between her and the King is that she's an introvert. So if the King of Cups is the teacher, right, as an extrovert, he has to have that classroom full of kids to be able to spout off that position to have to keep that position he needs those those following of students well take away the following of the students what would that be the counselor she needs she's like she's basically the same thing as a teacher but works better one-on-one -on -one, right works better on the phone works better you know with you sitting on that couch Right, think therapist, that's kind of how I think of this. But counselor could have many names. It doesn't have to actually be a therapist. It doesn't. E she doesn't even have to have a actual career with this position, I don't believe. You can be a counselor and help people and be better one-on-one -on -one helping people than she would be in a crowd. Makes a lot of sense for her. Then we get to the queen of swords and everybody loves her. <laughs> Again, the only difference between her and the king is that she's intuitive. So if he is the supervisor, right, think about big Walmart, take Walmart away, 
what would you what would you get the inspector is this is a one day job he goes in and he's able to do it all in one she's able to do it all in one day that's how organized mentally she is she's got her clipboard and she's clicking away and she doesn't have to manage Walmart but for one day and she can do it in one day she doesn't have to do it every day he that's his position she comes in she's like okay well you need to do this 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 and this and that's how that's how you can better run your Walmart that makes a lot of sense for her to be the inspector now I'm not saying that his position is less because he has to do that every day and she can only she can do it in one it's just that with her being an introvert that makes her more of an internal her mind map is internal her planning and organization is more internal and better one-on-one. -on -one. She doesn't have to manage all the people of the Walmart. She just needs to manage him. She just needs to manage him in a way and she's only dealing with him so that he can put forth better, skill, better skills to do all the other people that he's over. Again, works better one-on-one. -on -one. Then, we, then we get to the Queen of Pentacles. Now she is the ISFJ and intuitive, sensing, feeling, judging. Again, we're trying to see patterns, so I, I like to look at the kings here. Now, if the king is the provider, then, and that he has, he has to have the family to be the provider, right? As an extrovert, as an extrovert, he needs the people to hold that position. But for her, she's better one-on-one, -on -one, right? She's the nurturing aspect of that position. And if he is taking care of the whole family and needs the actual family to be a family man, then she just needs him or she just needs that one child or she just needs that grandmother. Better one-on-one -on -one has out how I always thought of introverts. And so they call her the protector. That makes so much sense for her because if he is the provider and he's providing, then she, her main job is to stay home, you know, mostly liking that position, right? Housewife type of a mentality that keeps her at home and keeps her holding the fort down. She's holding the fort while he's taking care of the fort. And they're just two sides of the same coin to me. Makes a lot of sense for her. Okay. Now we get to the knights. There's a whole bunch of action with the knights that I love. The knight of wands. Again, let's see some patterns. Or... Let's see some patterns here. All the knights are extroverted, much like the kings, right? All of them are extroverted. Now, now we get into the other side of the spectrum. The knight or the king and queen are two sides of the same coin as judgings. They are judgers. That's the last letter of all of all eight of those personality types. And the knight and the pages are going to be two sides of diff different coins for perceivers. Okay? Perception. That's what the knights and the pages are. And then there's some differences that we're going off of, much like the knights we're talking about right now are extroverts, all of them. So the knight of wands is the E-N-T-P. That means extroverted, intuitive, thinking, perceptive and the name they give him is the inventor I think of him as someone who has so many ideas right I mean look at the drive and the willpower he has and he needs the crowd okay needs the patent office <laughs> and he needs his things he needs his materials and he's able to stand up and give out a speech about all it entails to invent his thing that he invented. And he probably ha is inventing all things. He doesn't even really care about the results aspect of the invention. He just has to invent. So it's much like getting his hands into things at all the time. Just has his hands in everything. And that's his goal. That's his main goal as the inventor. Makes a lot of sense for him. And then we get to the Knight of Cups, who is an extroverted intuitive feeling perceiving again that's a whole lot like the the king right 
only difference being that the king is a judger and he perceives things. It makes a lot of sense for this position too. He does look like he does look like he's perceiving some things. Now the name they give him is the champion. Now I love that they they dub him the champion, but that in this particular Rider Waite deck, he doesn't much look victorious. He looks kind of melancholy. And not in a sad way, not in an actual melancholy way, but in a okay, if you think of the think of think of the people who win Purple Hearts and how they really don't think that they deserve them. That's how I think of this. He's the champion. He's able to put forth all the necessary skills to become the champion, but then he doesn't really need the recognition. It's because he has the ability to be the champion. That's the whole point. He doesn't need the glory with it. That's not the goal for him. The goal is just to be the champion because he has all the necessary skills. Then we get to the Knight of Swords. So much action with this. <laughs> Going against the wind. I love that a lot of people know that about this card. But he is an ESTP, which means extroverted, sensing, thinking, perceiving. A lot of sensing and thinking. <laughs> a lot of mind, a lot of mentalities, a lot of mental things happening with those four letters. They call him the promoter. Now, when I see this position and then the name they give him, which is the promoter, I think, wow, he is the salesman that is going to do whatever the hell he can to sell me the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> there's a there's wonderful um, YouTube videos out about this, this young guy who goes around and he sells things and he's so funny with it. He's just he's perfect for this position and this if he was a court card this is the what he would be <laughs> he's the promoter the only his only goal is to put forth his knowledge of promoting something well well it has this this and this feature well you know if you buy it now you can you can save money later like he's the one that's going to talk you into so many things because you think he just sounds like he's just got it going on. He sounds like he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. This is not a boyfriend I want when I'm 16 years old. <laughs> so then finally we get to the, the Knight of Pentacles who is an ESFP. That is an extroverted sensing feeling perception. Now they call him the performer. Again, look at this. We have the champion and the performer, and they neither one of them actually look like they're doing anything. So how is that possible? Well, with the performer, I feel like, as a sensing, feeling, perceptor, I feel like he's like the lion tamer, right? When you see the lion tamer, it's not so much for the glory or for the clapping that happens. It's for the grounding control he has over the lion. It's for that moment that he looks into the lion's eyes and he's like, I have you right where I want you. That's his energy as a performer. It's not for the recognition. It's for the control. So, okay. Pages, last but not least. <clears throat> okay lovely now again two sides of the same coin the knights are all extroverts and the pages are introverts so we take the positions of the knights the inventor champion pr promoter performer and we take away the, their crowds and let's see what happens the page of wands they call him the architect. Well, if the inventor is the knight and we have to take away all his things, right? We take away all his all of his things and the people that he's inventing for. The people that come to him with problems and he's like, oh, I got a solution for that. That's the inventor. Then what does he do? 
all he needs is a piece of paper. That's all the architect needs. And he just has to be with himself and his piece of paper and he can draw up a 28 story building. Doesn't need anybody. He just needs a plot of land and his piece of paper. Makes a lot of sense for the page of wands. He seems so in touch with just being by himself and this one tool that he needs. Maybe nothing at all. He could just tell someone how to build a 28 story building. <laughs> he might not even have any tools. And then we get to the page of cups. And I'm sorry, the page of wands is an intuitive, introvert intuitive thinking perceiver. Now the page of cups is an INFP, which is an intuitive, I'm sorry, I keep saying that first, introvert intuitive feeling perceiver. Again, if the knight of cups is the champion, take away take away whatever it is that he was fighting for. The crowd, so to speak. The crowd of the jousting, <laughs> right? Because these are so medieval drawings. But if we take away that, then what would this be? The healer. He's still in the crowd. He's just one man in the crowd of that jousting tournament. And while the champion is being the champion because he has the skills to be the best, who is the champion in the crowd that doesn't need the crowd and he just works well with one, one person? That's all he needs is one person. He doesn't need everybody. He just needs his target for who he needs to heal. It would be the doctor, right? It would be the doctor that's in that tent that's trying to heal the people that come in. That makes so much sense for the other side of the coin to be a healer, right? Think of tribes. If like I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of thinking on um, Pocahontas a little bit. You got the chief, right? Which I'm not gonna say that he's the the king. Okay, I'm just trying to think about two sides of the coin. If we have the chief, then the next important person in the whole entire tribe would be the shaman or the doctor, <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense for the page. Okay, and we get to the page of swords. Again, against the wind, see? The wind is coming this way, and he's looking this way. Like, ah, uh, okay. And the knight was too. The knight was doing the same thing. Except the knight, there was more, mm, there was more of a uh, force with it. He's like, I'm going to brave this, right? I'm going to brave this myself. I don't need to cut through it. I'm just going to stand here and let it pass. Now, if the knight of swords was the promoter, right? That salesperson that's just cutting you out, okay? Making you buy that, that Kirby vacuum. Then the page is the crafter. He made the, the Kirby vacuum possible so that the promoter could sell it. And you need both. Makes a lot of sense to be crafty to be able to withstand the storm without having to cut through anything. Now, finally, we get to the page of pencils, okay? Who is an ISFP? Extra, uh, introvert, sensing, feeling, per perception. Mm. There's so much grounding with that being, 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 a, being by yourself, and then sensing things by yourself, and then being able to feel things and perceive things, there's like, there's no air with that. <laughs> it's like, there's so much earth element in those four letters, it's just, ugh. And again, I like to think of the coin. If the knight was the performer, right? The lion tamer, it's about the control. Then he would be the composer right? If the lion tamer is taming the lion or a snake, I think kind of think of this as a, as one's a lion tamer. He has the crowd. He's got a whole bunch of lions, right? Then he might be the snake charmer. He's a man and his snake and his music. That's how he 
is composing things. That's how it's all going to happen. If you think of someone who writes music and how they have to really feel the music, think of, you know, Mozart. They have to really feel the music, yes, and they're perceiving what the ivories are doing, but they're also sensing there's a ground there. When they listen to music, they're not off in the clouds. They're right there with the music and there's just such a, there's such a pinpointed mentality with that and the groundedness that they would have to do to finish a piece of music is astounding. So, that was so fun. All right, I encourage all of you, if this is something that interests you, check out the websites. I'll leave all the links below. Take the test. Even like I said, if this is something for you to journal about or something for you to figure out, just figure out what court card you are, just as a fun exercise. Let me know if you try it down below. All right, hope this was informative and I hope it was fun. Much love.